Exodus chapter number 12 this morning for a little while, please. Exodus chapter number 12. Verse number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb. According to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house. Take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be a lamb without blemish, a male of the first year. It shall take it out of the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts, on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden it all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the firmness thereof. And he shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaining of it until the morning, he shall burn with fire. And thus shall you eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand. And he shall eat it in haste. You better be ready. You better be ready. That's what that's saying. You got to be ready. This is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. You shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Upon my heart to preach to you this morning for a few minutes on this thought, a very simple thought. God's Lamb's enough. <laughs> God's lamb is enough. Father, touch the word of God this morning. I pray to find a lodging place in all our hearts and lives and minds. God, how I pray that folks would be obedient to the spirit of God. Do that that you would have them to do. I'm glad that the Lord Jesus is enough. I'm glad he's enough for all our problems, for all our difficulties. I'm glad he's enough today for every circumstance of life. I'm glad he's enough to get us where we need to be. And I'm thankful today, Father, for the opportunity and the privilege to brag on him whose name is above every other name. Touch us today, make us to be a vessel unto honor unto him, an instrument unto righteousness in thy good hands that we might be a blessing to someone today. Lord, I realize this is not about me. It's not about Brother Philip. It's not about the church. It's about Jesus Amen. today. Amen. Lord, I pray he'd be exalted. He'd be magnified. He would be lifted up Amen. that all men might be drawn unto him. And we'll thank you and bless you. Praise your world without end for what you accomplish. In Jesus' blessed Jesus. name. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God's land is more than enough. More than enough. You notice in these scriptures that the word of God given unto Moses said, take a lamb for a house. <coughs> One lamb, the lamb. And finally he says, let your lamb. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. There is a lamb. <coughs> Slain before the foundation of the world. Yeah. And it's only in his name. Mm 
that we have the opportunity and the privilege of being born into the family of God. He is the only surety. He is the only protection. He is the only Savior that has ever been or ever will be. Yeah, yeah, you always said amen right there. Yeah. He's the only Savior, He's the only surety, and He's the only one who can do for us what needs to be done that we might make it into the family of God. He is the Savior. Amen. The only Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but, I like this, have. Yes, Present tense. Have. I got it right now everlasting life. I don't have to wait till the day I meet Jesus face to face to get it. I've already got it. But it's in His name. It's through His blood. And He's going to take care of it. He's more than enough Amen. to do the job. Amen. Amen. God's Lamb is more than enough. All the types, all the shadows, all the things that are the Word of God that point to the Lord Jesus. I believe this, this particular chapter and this verses of Scripture right here do as well to describe who Jesus really is as any other piece of scripture throughout the word of God. This is probably me the best because Jesus is the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. There never has been a time when he wasn't. May I go on record to tell you there never will be a time when he won't be. He always has been. He always will be. He was God. He still is. And he's going to be. Amen, sir. When he said, let us make man in our own image, he was talking to his son. He was talking to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Three and one and one and three. And all three agreed together and all three spoke together and all three did the job together. Amen. Without him was not anything made that was made. All things were made by him and for him. He's talking about his son. Yes. And when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, that he might redeem them which were under the law, that we might be adopted into the family of God and become heirs and joint heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen. God's lamb is enough. Amen. It'll do the job. Amen. But he's not an it, it's a he. Amen. Amen. In verse number three, he said... A lamb. One lamb. There is only one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Yeah. It's not in the name of Baptist. It's not even the name of church. It's not in the name of Buddha. It's not in the name of Muhammad. It's not in the name of some moon god named Allah. That's right, right. It's not in the name of any denomination or organization. It's in the name of... <coughs> Jesus, yes, for he shall save his people from their sins. Verse 4 says, the Lamb. Thank God there is only one, the Lamb of God. Verse number 5 talks about your Lamb. If the Lamb is not your Lamb, you don't have a Lamb. Whoa, right. 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 Duh. <laughs> if the lamb is not your lamb you don't have a lamb because there is no other way in the United States alone I don't know where you do this or not I'll give you a little bit of statistics I don't really like them and I don't care for them that well but in the United States alone there's more than 3,900 registered religions that are organized and recognized by the United States government more than 3,900 religions and there's only one God, and there's only one Savior, and there's only one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's right. That's right. That's right. Sounds like to me we got something messed up. Yes, sir. <laughs> we have been set up. As Nebuchadnezzar set up his God, he set up his idol, and everybody was commanded to come and worship him. Yet, there's only one God. <laughs> one Savior. One lamb. But thank God he's, right. he's enough. Did you know there's nothing wrong with him? Amen. Right. Some of you just looking at me like a cat looking at a new gate. You don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> there is absolutely nothing wrong right. with the Amen. lamb. Amen. And there will be nothing wrong with you when the lamb becomes your lamb. 
Y'all didn't? Some of you not here yet. <laughs> the Lamb becomes your Lamb. Amen. And you become an heir and a joint heir with the Lamb. Amen. You become grafted into the family of God. Even though you're deserving of nothing but hell. Even though all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Even though there's not one of us that deserves anything but the pits of hell. For our lives and for our sin. There's none of us righteous. No, not one. But the Lamb of God was perfect. He was spotless. Undefiled. He had no guile whatsoever. He who knew no sin. No, he didn't become a sinner. He became our sin. He took upon himself all our sin. And he who knew no sin became sin for us. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Not in us. Wow. Yes, sir. All our righteousness is no more than filthy rags in his sight. We got nothing good about us at all. And I know that's going to bust your bubble, but that's just the way it is. There is nothing good about any of us. But there's nothing wrong with the Lamb of God. He's perfect. He's spotless. He's undefiled. There is nothing wrong with God. He lived a perfect life. He never had an unclean thought. He never said a bad word. He never went anywhere he wasn't supposed to go. His, his feet never walked a crooked path. His hands never held anything that was defiled. He was the perfect Lamb of God. Amen. He lived that way because he knew we couldn't. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. We were like sheep gone astray, having no shepherd. But the great shepherd left glory and came down to this earth at the very appointed time. And he walked among us that we might behold the glory of God that he had before the world ever was. Amen. Amen. Perfect, spotless, undefiled. John said, and we saw it. And the word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. The Lamb. One lamb, and one lamb only, can become your lamb. And that will be enough. That's right. Yeah, amen. That will be enough. There's no danger of that lamb being too small. Did you notice what the scripture says? Take unto you a lamb. For the number of souls that is in your house, and if the lamb be too large that your souls and your household are not able to deal with it and eat it, then go get your neighbor and bring them. Yes, sir. That's right. And bring them into your house, and there'll still be enough. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, man. The Lamb of God is enough to save whosoever will call upon his name. Amen. Amen. God's Lamb is enough. He's enough, and I give you three things and I close. God's lamb is enough to get you in. Yeah. He's enough to get you in. When the blood was shed, put on the side post and over the lintel over the door, and they were brought inside the door, and they were hid behind the door, God's word said, you'll be safe again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lord have mercy y'all are way too quiet and dignified <laughs> if you're inside behind the door and Jesus is that door if you're hid behind that door safe in the ark of God safe in the room of God safe in the place that God would have you to be in his family under the blood nothing can get to you Amen. The destroyer came through, and all those that did not have the blood over the door died. The firstborn of every family, of every animal, died. That was not under the blood. But all them that were inside, behind the door, hid behind the grace of God, and we are saved. Glory, hallelujah. We're saved by grace through faith. What in? 
The Word of God. Amen. It is the Word of God that builds faith within us to believe that the Lamb of God is enough. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. By grace we are saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. There's nothing you can do that would get good enough to get in there. But when the door is opened up and you let him walk in and the blood is applied to your heart and your life, he's enough to get you into the family of God. He's enough to get you into the ark of safety. He's enough to get you into the will of God. He's enough to get you into the word of God. He's enough to get you into fellowship with God. He's enough to get you into a place where you can serve God. He's enough to take you through this world. Praise God. Praise He's enough. God. They got in because of the Lamb. We still get in because of the Lamb. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whosoever will can still get in. Yes, sir. Because the blood that the Lamb shed on the cross of Calvary is still powerful enough to take you into the holy of holies in God. Your lamb can get you in. In the family of God. In the bloodline. In the airline. In the book of life. In the church. In the will of God. Not his will that any should perish. But that all should come. To repentance. And there is a doctrine that the church don't want you to print. To repeat today. The doctrine of true repentance. But without repentance, you ain't coming to me. Right. Amen. That's right. That's right. Unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. That's right. But it's not God's will that you perish, but you come to repentance. He's enough to get you in the word. He's enough to get you in the way. The Lamb of God is enough to get you in. To say even to the uttermost, all who will come to God by him. He's enough to get you into fellowship, not only with your family, mm -hmm. but with the family of God. Yeah. Did you know you can't have fellowship, not the way you should have, unless you're in? That's right, sir. That's right. Yeah, man. You can't have fellowship with everybody that you should have fellowship with. You can't love one another. You can't bear one another's burdens. You can't do what God would have you to do unless you're in. And the blood of the Lamb, God's Lamb, is enough to get you in. I'm glad my Lamb lives within me. Amen. He died on the cross of Calvary. A lot of times you see pictures of Calvary and you see Jesus still hanging there on the tree. Don't do that. He's not there. They took him down from that tree. He died. On the cross of Calvary. He died. He, his life expired. Totally by his will. Yep. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. By his own accord. He said father into thy hands I commend my spirit. And he died. He gave up the ghost and died. Of his own accord. They didn't kill him. Amen. Right. He gave up his life. <laughs> they took him down off of that cross. You know I don't believe those two thieves could have died. Until he died. Well, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Because nobody dies around the resurrection. Mm -hmm. yeah. Y'all mm -hmm. didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> Came to Mary and Martha. He said, Martha, what you don't understand. She said, I know he shall live in the resurrection. He said, what you don't understand is I am the resurrection. Yeah. Jesus was a undertaker's worst nightmare. <laughs> he never went to a funeral. Yeah, right. Nobody could stay dead around him. Right. Amen. 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 He's enough Amen. to get you in. My lamb lives within me. He died on the cross. They buried him in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, but don't leave him there either. That's right. He went down and he took the keys away from of hell and of death, away from the devil. And he walked out of there that third day. He said, I laid it down. I'm going to take it up again. Amen. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up again. He gave his life. He went through. He took the keys away. The devil may still live in hell, but he don't own it. Wow, that's right. Right. That's right. The Lamb of God took the keys away from him. And 
he led captivity captive. All those Old Testament saints that had died looking forward to the cross, looking forward to the Messiah, looking forward to the promise of Israel, came out of there with him. Amen. And they walked the streets of Jerusalem, and there were seen of more than 500 at one time. Wow. And Jesus still has the keys. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Praise God. You don't have to go to hell. That's right, you, know. you can get in. The Lamb's enough to get you in. Amen. But He's the only one that can. Amen. He's not only enough to get you in, but He's enough to get you through. Praise the Lord. The Lamb of God is enough to get you through. Job chapter 14 verse 1 Job I, I believe he knew what he was talking about he said man born of a woman was a few days and full of trouble <laughs> somebody will say amen, I say amen. <laughs> he got that exactly right that applies to the saved and to the lost because we're still in this body of flesh we're a few days and full of trouble and they tell us every time you hear the word cancer, it all it all drive fear into our heart for a thought anyway. They said that one in every three is going to have it. That's that'll sober you up right quick. But God's lamb is more than enough to get you through. It. Praise the Lord, Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He's enough to free you from the trauma and the guilt of the past. He's enough to get you out of the trouble of the day, and he's enough to get you out of the terror of the future. Yes, sir. Where I go now, preacher, they're saying, what are we going to do? They're wringing their hands. They're looking at me, and they're thinking, they're going to take our Social Security away from us. They're going to take our insurance away from us. Everything's going to get so high, we won't be able to afford it. We can't pay for it. We don't know what to do. What are we going to do? Now, your normal answer to them is, about what? <laughs> I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine because this life will be cloudy. For the skies may turn to gray. I don't worry over the future, for I know what Jesus said, and today he walks beside me, for he knows what is ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know And I know he holds my hand. The Lamb of God's enough to get you in, but he's also enough to get you through. He said, I'm not ever going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. I'm going to go with you all the way, even unto the end. He didn't save me by his marvelous grace and set me down and say, now make it the best way you can. He said, from this day forward, you're not on that broad road of destruction anymore. You're on a narrow path that leads unto everlasting life. And you now, we're just going to walk it together. Amen. Hallelujah to God. We're going to walk it together. Amen. <laughs> I've never been anywhere that he wasn't already there. That's right. Amen. And the promise of God, sure and steadfast, tells me, I'll never go anywhere. But he won't already be there. That's right. Amen. Amen. He's enough to get you through. He's not ever made a mistake. He's never failed to do right. Wow. He's faithful. He hath loved us with an everlasting love. He came to give life and that more abundantly. Boy, how far below our standard of life that we have in Jesus we're living. Right. Right. Yeah. How far below our standard that we ought to have in life 
in Jesus, we are living. He's enough, more than enough, to get you through. Why? Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And this, and I close, he's more than enough to get you out. He's more than enough to get you in, he's more than enough to get you through, and he's more than enough to get you out. Amen. Get you out of the mess you are in. He saves even to the uttermost. He makes new creatures out of old creatures. He alone can break the chains of sin. He alone can break the habits. He alone can break all the bondage that you're living under. He can get you out of that. Yeah. Heard the testimony this week of a young man that was raised in church. His mom and dad took him to church. They prayed for him all his life. And yet, for 11 years, he turned his back on God, turned his back on them, walked out into the world. He was strung out on cocaine, and he was living like hell. On his way to hell. Until one day, the Holy Ghost of God got a hold of him and arrested his attention, and he fell on his knees, and the chains were broken, and now he's preaching the gospel and pastoring the church and singing up a storm, and he's having himself a time going with Jesus. Why? Because the Lamb of God's enough to get you out of that mess. He got him out of that mess. And he'll get you out of the mess that you're in. He's more than enough to get you out of your habits, more than enough to get you out of your bondage, more than enough to get you out of your chains, more than enough to change you from the inside out. It's more than enough to put you where you need to be, to get you out of the world and into the things of God. Amen. It's more than enough to get you out of the hell holes of the world and into the house of God. He's more than enough to get you off of the street into the choir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, he'll put a song down in your heart. He sure will. Yeah. That you can make, make melody unto the Lord. Yeah. I went into a hospital room, a nursing home ward, really, several, many years ago. And my grandmother was in there, and we went in to visit her. There were some folks next door saw me go into that room and they came into where I was and they said dad's getting ready to go home and he wants somebody to come and sing with him sing to him and I went into the room and this old fellow was laying there and he's a child of God you can see the glory of God all over his face and he was looking into yon I spoke to him and I held his hand and I prayed with him a minute and I said, Brother, what do you want us to sing? He said, uh, why don't we sing in a land where we'll never grow old? And I started singing, in a land where we'll never grow old. We got down and he helped me through the first verse, got to the chorus, start on the second verse. And I could hear him over there trying to sing. He was weak and he... Barely couldn't get enough voice and enough noise coming out of him that he couldn't carry a tune in a bucket with a lid on it. <laughs> but he wasn't singing for me. <laughs> oh, glory to God. He was singing to him. Yes, sir. He had to sing that verse kind of by himself while I had me a spell over in the corner. <laughs> yep. Thank God he's enough. To get you out of here. Right. He is. He is. The greatest thing he'll ever do for his children is take them home. Amen. Amen. Right. Huh. Mm. If that ever gets a hold of you, they'll catch you down about Dollar General somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> He's enough to get you out of here. He sure is. He sure is. <laughs> I watched them leave this world with a shout of heaven on their face. Amen. 
When they had no breath left, there was a smile all over them. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the greatest day I'll ever live will be the one that he takes me home. Amen. Bless it with his name. And can I tell you this? Just any day now, our Lord is coming. He'll be returning for you and me. Oh, I've been watching and I've been waiting just any day now his face I'll see. Praise God. <laughs> Very soon, just any minute now, there's going to be a trumpet sound and a voice ring out with a shout and all those that are redeemed, born again, children of God that the Lamb has got into the family of God, brought them through their troubles and their heartaches, going to get them out of here. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 <laughs> He's going to take us to where he is. The Bible said we'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Folks want to argue about what happens after that. I really don't care. Amen. It don't bother me a bit. I'm going to be where he is, and that's going to be good enough. Amen. Amen. He's enough to get you out. He said, Preacher, you don't know what I'm into. You don't know my life. You don't know the strengths. You don't know the change. You don't know the bondage. You don't know the sin. You don't know the circumstance. You don't know the situation. No, I don't. And chances are that if I did know, there wouldn't be a whole lot I can do about it. But thanks be unto God, the God of heaven, the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world is enough for whatever your situations are. He's enough to get you in. He's enough to get you through. And he's enough to get you out. Amen. Amen. After my son-in-law, 24 years old, was taken away from us, I didn't understand. And I was hurt. To be honest with you, I was hurt and I was confused. I was thinking, Lord, I don't, I don't get this. He was a good boy. He taught Sunday school. He led the singing in their church. And he had a two-month-old baby and a wife that loved him and, and a good family and a good job. And I, I just don't understand this. And the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart and said, God had a better plan than you did. Yep. That's right. That's right. God's got a better plan than you did. He's never made a mistake. He's always done well. Everything he's ever done has been right. <coughs> he's not going to do any different now. Amen. Amen. <coughs> no matter what you've been through, no matter how you've been hurt, no matter what you've been thinking about, and a lot of people get mad at God because things don't go the way they want it to go or they feel like it's supposed to go. Do you know that your opinion really don't matter? <laughs> this is the only one that matters. Amen. We're going to find out at the end that he did it just right. Yeah. Stand to your feet, please. <laughs> now I'll tell you today, God's lamb is enough. He's enough for whatever your needs are. He is enough for whatever your needs are. You can bring them to him today. He's enough. He is enough. And he'll do for you exactly what needs to be done. Didn't say he'd do what you wanted him to do. He's enough to do what needs to be done. My God shall supply all your needs. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He is enough for your need. Whatever your need is today, I can promise you, you bring it to him. You give it to him. He'll take care of it. He'll answer. Whatever your need is, I did not promise you he would give you your want. But I'm glad the Lord is my shepherd. Because he is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. 
There won't be a need I have that he will not supply. The reason I'm doing what I'm doing right now is because I believe that he's enough. I know that he is enough. Come to him today. If you're here lost and undone without God, you've never met the Christ of Calvary. You don't know that your sins are under his blood. He'll save you today. He sure will. He'll save even you today. You say, you don't know my life. No, but he does. And he knows that his blood is able to wash you from all your sin. Amen. He's not. He's not. Now, come to him. Whatever your need are, needs are, bring them to Jesus. Today. She's going to say, I'm going to get out of the way. Come to Jesus today.